Network and welcome to episode 19 of our Mario game in Java tutorial. Last episode we implemented a quick and efficient way of level design into our game. This episode we're going to create a mushroom power up and uh, make our mushroom behave and uh, yeah the mushroom will take effect on our player. Alright so as you can see in GIMP I made a little mushroom sprite. Nothing special but because I made a sprite for the mushroom I'm just going to quickly create a sprite in the code so public static sprite mushroom all right then mushroom is equal to a new sprite and the x coordinate is 2 y coordinate is 1 and sheet okay so now we're going to create a new package uh, so we'll click our entity package then go new package so after dot entity, we're going to type dot power up. So what we pretty much just did is create a sub package of entity. Now we're going to create a new class in that package and we're going to call it mushroom. So now we create our mushroom class, of course, because it's an entity, we're going to make it extend entity, import entity and uh, oh, come on, import. Entity cannot be resolved into a type. I don't know why it does that. Sometimes it does that and it doesn't realize entity at first. Maybe I typed it wrong, I don't know. Yeah, now we can import it and yeah, just add the constructor. Right. And of course we need to add our render and tick method, so we're just going to go into our entity class, copy these two methods, and paste them. So in our render method, we're just going to pretty much make our class draw our mushroom sprite. So we're going to type g dot draw image game dot mushroom dot get buffered image. And of course we need to import game. Then we're going to type x, y, width, height, what the uh, didn't mean to do that, width, height, then of course null, and just erase everything else. Put a semicolon on the end and I accidentally misspelled height. Alright, so now we got that done, we're going to pretty much make our player grow bigger when he collides with the mushroom, so we're going to go into our player class, and you might be thinking we're going to create a for entity E for loop, but no, we're going to actually type a different for loop. I'm not sure if I've done, I'm not sure if I've really shown this for, for loop to you guys, but I'm going to type it then I'll explain it. So for int i is equal to zero, i is less than uh, handler dot entity dot size i plus plus, then we're going to type entity e is equal to handler dot entity dot get i. Oops, my bad. Just change that to a lowercase e. So what it's doing here, this for loop is scanning our whole entity linked list in our handler class. Then, uh, which, then whatever entity it scans, it will create an entity object out of. And why we use this instead of the other sort of for loop is because if we use the other for loop for every entity in game dot handler dot entity whatever uh, we can get something called a concurrent modification exception I'm not exactly sure what that is but it is an exception that does crash our game I'm not sure what causes it but yeah this way I found is a better way and it prevents these exceptions all right so now we're going to type if e dot get id is equal to id dot mushroom so we're just checking if the object is actually a mushroom and because we haven't created a uh, constant called mushroom in ID, we're just going to hover over it and click create enum constant mushroom in ID. And there we go, that'll just add a mushroom sort of thing for us, constant. Alright, yep, set changes. Now we're going to type if get bounce 
dot intersects e dot get bounce. So this is pretty much checking if we're colliding with the mushroom. And if that happens, we're gonna pretty we're gonna multiply our width by two. So we're gonna type width times equals two. Remember we did width plus equals two before. Now we're gonna do times equals two. And uh, for the uh, times sign or multiplying sign, we put an asterisk. And now we're gonna type height times equals two. Now that pretty much makes our player twice as big. And after that, we're gonna type e dot die. And that will pretty much destroy our mushroom whenever we collide with it, because you know, that's what happens in the game. Now we're gonna add a mushroom. And to do this, we're, we have to go back into our uh, level.png file where our actual level is. Oh, not create a new image, so I'm just gonna open the file level.png. Uh, whoops. Okay, I'm just gonna zoom in. Alright, and I'm gonna select the sort of a fully, fully red colour, so FF0000 or 25500 for the RGB value. And uh, I'm just going to put a red dot uh, here. So this is where the mushroom will spawn. Alright, now I'm going to export it. Yeah, just replace the other level.png and make sure it's in our res folder. So now we have to refresh our project folder. And we're going to go into our handler class. And now we're going to type if red is equal to 255 and green is equal to 255, oh my bad, is equal to 0, and blue is equal to 0, then add entity new mushroom uh, x by 64, y by 64, 64, 64, then right, then I guess we can put true for solid, then id dot mushroom, and this referring to this as the handler parameter. So just import mushroom and uh, what this is pretty much doing is that if a pixel of this RGB value uh, comes... So what this is pretty much doing is that it's going to scan all the pixels as you already know and if one of the pixels is equal to 255.00, well at least the RGB value is, then we'll just add a new mushroom in the level where the pixel would be in our level image. So now if we run our game... Alright, as you can see our mushroom is here and, uh, okay, um, I'll be right back, let me just fix this bug, I don't know what, really, know what's going on, uh, yeah, let me just fix this bug. <laughs> Alright, I found out what the problem is, so we're going to go into our key input class, and in our methods, we didn't check if this entity actually is a player, so it just moves every entity in the level. So to fix that, we're going to type if en.getID is equal to id.player. And uh, we're just going to copy all of our code and paste it in here. Yeah, remember to import id. And we'll do the same for the key released. So if en.getID is equal to id.player and just copy our switch and put it in there. Alright, so now if we run our game, as you can see, uh, the bug is gone. And if we collide with our mushroom, there we go. You can see we are now twice as big as we were before. And now that's pretty cool. And I actually forgot to make my mushroom sprite transparent, so I'm just going to quickly do that now. Alright, export, refresh, see if it's working. There we go. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll get around to fixing that after. I don't really know what's going on. So now we're going to make our mushroom behave. So we're going to go into our player class and we're going to copy our whole for loop that scans uh, the handler's tiled link list. So copy it and paste it into our mushroom class. And we're going to remove the if get bounds top dot intersect t dot get bounds uh, if statement. And in our get bounds left, 
uh, we're going to delete this as well, but we're going to type set val x 5, and in here we're going to set val x to negative 5. So what this pretty much does, if the left side of our mushroom collides with a wall, then it will pretty much just go the other way, and that will be the same with the right side of our mushroom collides with the wall. Now we're going to go back into our player class and copy our if falling statement because our mushroom is going to have a gravity effect and we're going to paste it. We're going to create a private random object and you'll see why so private random random is equal to a new random. I just import random and we're going to type int dir short for direction is equal to random dot next int 2. So what that will pretty much do is it will give us a random number out of two numbers and that will be 0 to 1. And uh, let's say if we uh, make random dot next int 5, then the numbers which the program can choose from will be 0 to 4. And uh, yeah, and so on. Now we're going to create a switch and it will be of dir. Then we're going to type case. 0. Then we're going to set val x equal to negative 5. And of course, break. Then case 1, set val x equal to 5, and break. And in our get bounds uh, bottom if statement, in our else if falling is not true and jumping is not true, if statement we're going to remove and jumping is not true because there's really no purpose in it right now. And I figured a way to fix the uh, bug we had where our player would just randomly teleport. So we're going to create two variables, int tpx is equal to get x, and int tpy is equal to get y. And after we multiply our width and height by 2, we're going to type set x tpx minus width, then set y tp y minus height. So now if we run our game, as you can see our mushroom has gravity because it fell at the start and it's moving. So now if we get it, uh, yeah there you go, as you can see we're bigger and we didn't get teleported. And if we run our game again, it could go left, yeah there we go. So the direction it goes in is completely random. And I might actually raise these blocks up by one. Because of the collision detection we implemented, we either will get sent to the left or right of uh, sort of this area, the platform. So I'm actually going to go into our level image and we're going to change some things. First, I said before that I want to raise the platforms up by one so we don't get this collision detection bug when we get our mushroom, so I'm just going to delete that and of course raise it up by one. Okay, make another one. Alright, there we go. And we're actually going to put some little barrier blocks there. Just the test of our mushroom bounces the other direction when it hits a wall while moving. So yeah, we're just going to export it, refresh our project folder and now run it. There you go, as you can see, our mushroom's still there. And there you go, it uh, moves left and right whenever it hits a wall. Yeah, because I made. And it goes faster because I didn't change set bell x to 1, but I guess we can change it back now. Actually, let's make it 3, because it's, you know, a bit slower pace. And it's around the speed a mushroom should be. So let me just run it, maybe I'll make set val x and val y 2, let's just try that. Yeah, I reckon that's about the right speed. So I'm going to wrap up this episode here. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment and subscribe. Stay tuned for more videos. If your friend is interested in learning how to program in Java, please send them this video.
And before I fully finish this episode, I, I just want to say another thank you to you guys because my channel has really grown recently and uh, a lot of people are posting really positive comments in the comment section of some of my videos. And the last episode I had a bit over 50 subscribers. Now, as I'm recording this, I have over 67. A huge subscriber gain there. And uh, yeah, I'm just really really stoked I don't know what to say I'm just so thankful for you guys and really happy so yeah I'm gonna see you guys soon bye